We are live Thursday night. It's Living in Jacksonville channel. And tonight I've got a special guest. I'm super excited. Everybody was saying today, hey, I've got a bunch of questions about pools. So I'm like, nice. Nice. What better thing to do than bring my friend John Spittler yes. on to answer all the questions? Because this man is in the Perfect. trenches dealing with pools every day. That's why he looks so fried right now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, burn. I mean, yes. sun burn. I was okay. in the sun all day today. All day. And it was a beautiful day oh, here yeah. in Northeast yeah. Florida. If you guys are online tonight watching i see a couple of you getting on make sure you put on the comments there where you're watching from we want to know where you're watching from also i did not prepare all the questions tonight and i know all of you that are buying i deal mostly with selling new construction here in northeast florida we have a plethora of new construction that's why john is so busy with island pools um building pools all over here in northeast florida and I have got so many new construction builds and everybody is always asking me about pools. And we, you know, I'm like not even fully through the construction. We're like, what about a pool? And I'm like, what about your budget? <laughs> so if you're tuning in, make sure you put in the comments where you're watching from. And of course, absolutely, this is a fully interactive show. Um, I love John because he's an open book and so am I. We mesh really well. So it's like, it's like hanging out with old buddy. He actually built my pool and we built a relationship uh, through that whole process. Um, I think it was right after COVID, wasn't it? It was. Or during COVID <laughs> or right before COVID? It was like yeah, during yeah. COVID. Yeah. Yeah, it was even crazier because it was no parts back there. And John's like, yeah, dude, hold on. I got to go drive to Georgia to find the parts to build yep. your pool. And I'll be back this afternoon. I'm like, <laughs> What are you talking about? Uh, That's well, how crazy goodness, it was back then. That. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I got in with the quote right before the explosion yes, of you did. defensive pools. Uh, <laughs> exploding. And, yeah. you know, it, it, first of all, I want to say that it wasn't my idea to build a pool, John. And you probably know that. Oh, yeah. I What happened was, is COVID came and basically the pool shut down here in Nocatee for only a short while. And right. everybody stopped going to the pool and everybody yeah. was like sitting next door in their pool going, looking at you in your yard going, oh, you poor son of a gun sitting on yeah. your grass. It's steaming hot. We can't go out and socialize. How nice would it be to be sitting on your pool while you're, um, what did they call it back there? Quarantining. <laughs> um, and so I got suckered into calling you and yeah. spent hundred grand on a pool and a hot tub and all that. Now these days. God knows you can't even, I don't know if you could even get close to that, but we're going to talk more. about that. So people, more. we're going to talk about the big question I get all the time. Okay. Before we get started, we're going to talk about, um, should you build your pool through the builder with their pool builder, or should you wait afterwards? That is the hugest question I get over and over again. And it's really an opinion. Okay. There's so many factors in that, that that's going to be a good portion of what we're going to go over. I'm going to get John's opi uh, opinion. I'm going to give my opinion and you guys can comment on that because it's a very controversial subject matter. Um, the other thing we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about what are people doing these days? What are the, the, the costs associated with that? Just total ballpark generalities. Um, silly questions like how do you get that bulldozer between these two houses in Nakati that are literally 15 feet apart or 10 feet apart, yeah. if you will, um, and all that good stuff. So, uh, John, you're at Island Pools. You've been doing this a little, a little while now. Yeah, yeah, about 10 years now. My partner started the company. 18 years ago. So we've been, we've been at it for a while. Yeah. Yeah. So um, let's start right off with that question, John. I mean, uh, you know, I personally, I, I was already in my home, so I didn't have the opportunity. I bought a spec home from the builder. I did not have the opportunity to, I didn't get offered the opportunity to build while the home construction was going on. I did it afterwards. And the reason I was glad I did that is because I got to live in my backyard and I actually completely changed the side of where I was putting my outdoor kitchen. We literally yep. had it plumbed in the gas line on one side. I know you don't remember because it's three years ago and you've no, been in your I backyard enough. Yeah. 
Yeah. So on the on the on the one side we had the gas line, and we literally had to run the gas the other side because I built an outdoor mm-hmm. kitchen. John built uh, a, I think we did a fourteen by twenty six uh, size pool, um, and we did a hot tub in the corner. I did it level in. We can talk about that tonight. Some people like their hot tubs popped up. I didn't want to climb over it. I wanted it to be level in the pool. Um, and then I did a screened in patio. I did not have you do the outdoor kitchen. I did that separately because I don't think you guys do that. Um, we can talk about that as well. But um, I was glad that I waited till afterwards because I got to decide, I got to live in the house a little bit and really look at other people's pools. I literally drew out what I wanted kind of like. So when you came over or you're at the time, uh, Mike or whoever it was came over, and the sales guy and I basically said, "Hey, I want to, I, re- I want to, uh, I want to do this pool. What do you think?" Um, yeah. And so I was glad I did it that way. And now that I sell real estate, I literally compare what a pool would cost if uh, you went outside and did it with a builder on your own after the construction, and then I've compared it to actual um, costs of the builder uh, offering to build it with the construction of the home. What do you think, John? Well, I mean, it, it's a great question. And so many people, when they're starting to look for a house and they're looking at new construction, are going to be faced with it. And that's really, you know, during the build of the house to have the pool done would be a convenience because the house is completed. You're handed the keys to the house and you have a ready to go pool in the backyard. And, and that's, you know, I guess the emotional argument of it. You could... Yeah. You could also argue the financial side that it's bundled into that initial mortgage as well, um, cost-wise. So yeah, to clarify that, when you're built, when you're uh, building a pool with the builder, you're still required to put fifty percent down, um, but you can it, you can mortgage the remainder of it in, in the pool. So let's talk about that for a minute. Yeah. Uh, what are people doing? I mean, because pools are not cheap anymore. I mean, not everybody's no. sitting on one hundred thirty thousand dollars, right? Yeah. So, what are people doing in generalities as far as financing pools? Are they paying cash? Are they doing mm-hmm. refis on their home? What are they doing these days? Yeah, I'm, I'm not seeing as many refis right now with interest rates going up. I'd say that's a smaller portion, uh, maybe ten percent of my clients right now. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say fifty percent to 60% are cash buyers in some form, whether they're liquidating stocks or some type of asset to pay for it. And then the other portion are financing through either Viking Financial or Lions Financial, which are the two main finance companies that handle pools in the Northeast Florida area. And both of them are great accredited companies that we've dealt with for years. And, and and how does that work? I mean, you do a credit check. You uh, do you still put a certain amount down? You you can. So, like, I'll give you an example with Lions. A lot of a lot of our customers. Let's just take a eighty thousand dollar pool package. They might decide to finance forty of it and put down forty thousand of their own cash. Others will finance the entire amount. And, you know, that because they specialize in just pool loans, it's very streamlined. It's very efficient. And um, even the draw schedules as we're building the pool are very simple. They have four draws during a build with, say, Lions Financial. And it's basically we go to the job site at a certain phase of the job, take a picture. We send it to Lions. Lions confirms it with the homeowner. This is your pool. This is the stage it's in. The contractor is saying, and then they wire us the funds. So it's very seamless for the homeowner to do it. Is it is it like a draw, a construction yeah. loan? It mm-hmm. is. So yeah. it's in stages. Yeah, they'll do it in four four stages during the build. Okay. Yeah. Are anybody is, is can anybody do a loan with no money down? Purchasing a, do a pool loan with yes. no money. Down? You yeah. can't. That's crazy. I would say probably 80 to 90% of my customers who use Lions uh, put nothing down. No wow. Package. It's like buying furniture at one of these furniture shops, yep. no money down, except right. it's not interest free for, th- for the first three years. 
Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, wait, wait. What's what kind of interest rates are we seeing these days? I don't on know where they're. I, I do not know where they're currently at because I just honestly haven't been talking to uh, the the last two customers that I'm working with right now that are financing through Lions that I'm in current builds with. I didn't ask them where their rates were at, you know, because it's kind of a, a private conversation for them. Uh, in right. the past, you know, their rates have been seven, eight percent. I don't know where they're at right now because uh, okay. I haven't gotten a, you know, so it's I would assume it's higher because the interest rates have gone up. Yeah, I would imagine because construction loans are around nine, 10 percent on regular it's, construction. So I'm pretty sure it's probably aligned with that. So that would be my guess. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, on average, like what are you seeing people building? Like what's a good starter pool? Yeah. Uh, someone who's got a, 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 a decent budget, but it's not going over the top. Um, can you give us an idea of, of what yeah. people are spending and what that looks like? Yeah. So an, a, a great starter. When I, when I say a starter pool, I will, I'll just say an average pool that we build. Okay. Which is going to have, anywhere from six to 800 square feet of hard surface decking, um, a pebble interior finish, salt water systems, uh, variable speed pumps, master controllers, multicolored lights, a sun shelf, a bubbler, umbrella holders, things like that. That's, that, that's going to be the atypical starter pool. Mm -hmm. And I would say mid seventies is probably very realistic for most homes. And then hot you, or no hot tub, no hot tub, and then you just start, <clears throat> not no screened in. in. Yeah. So you okay. Can, so let's add. Okay, let's take that pool. We'll add right. a hot tub and a screen. So you you add a hot tub. You're going to add about fifteen thousand to the cost of the project. Okay. So now you're now you're about ninety thousand, and we'll just say that's a kind of a running average. Obviously, you could go much higher depending on if it's a bigger pool and a, you know, 2000 square feet of decking and stuff like that, but go 75,000 yeah. starter pool, 90,000 when you add a hot tub. And then depending on how big the screen enclosure is, obviously, um, and the, the size of everything in that space, you're probably adding about another 15 to 20 grand to the project with a screen mm -hmm. enclosure. So you're, you're in that hundred. And I, I would say it's, Comfortable to say 110 to 120,000 screen enclosure, hot tub, pool, decking, all in complete. Yeah. So, I mean, I was thinking because I got away with it before prices blew up after COVID. I think I got away with 90 grand with a hot tub, pool, and a screen. That was a long yeah. time ago. So, I would say that today would be roughly what a 125, 125 grand. Yeah. And your pool, you know, we did that upgraded deck uh, with the artistic pavers that. Uh, um, and so, you know, there was a few upgrades out there. But, yeah, your pool today would probably be in that 125 range would be my guess. Yeah. Yeah. What are people doing for pavers these days? I mean, it's like I'm seeing people do. Is it granite? I mean, it seems crazy to me, some of the stones I'm seeing. A, I think they're slippery. B, I'm concerned about the discoloration. Uh, yeah. I was using a synthetic, uh, right, uh, yeah. stone, um, yeah. which I've been super happy with long term. It took a little while because we got some different batches to, to get the coloration <laughs> right. I remember. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, it's construction. I tell people all the time, I mean, yeah. You're doing construction, you know, I, I praise you guys and all my, my, my GCs and superintendents because it's brutal, you know, yeah. uh, construction always has these slight issues, you know, even as long as you've been doing it, you don't control the production of a synthetic stone and no. where they pulled the uh, one stone from compared to the other, you know, because they're right. they're fired up, they're heated up, and there's so many elements to it that I learned through that process. Well, when you when, when you're building a pool, yeah, and pool, pools are somewhat unique, comparative to other things that are constructed houses, buildings, etc. Is that we're going into the ground, and we're effectively digging the shell by hand, we're stealing it by hand when it's shot with concrete. It's shot by people who then carve it by hand. And then all the materials that go to it are, 
you know, the interior pebble finishes are trout on by hand. I mean, pools are unique in that a lot of the aspects of building a pool is they're handmade, which is wonderful, but also unique to construction. And then you have materials that are shipped to you that you have to contend with. And it's really just a matter of working and keeping your foot on the pedal with your project until you get to that end game with the homeowner where you knocked out that last one or two percent of details like you kind of mentioned the the decking yeah but going back to stone so the the a lot of materials that are going down on pool decks right now we're using a preponderance of artistic pavers uh in the shell lock ivory color so a white large format paver it's you can walk on it barefoot in the middle of august so it's very easy on the feet um very coastal looking, beautiful. That probably is accounting for almost half of the decks I'm putting down. So how big are those? You, well, they come in 12 by 24s. Uh, they come in 24 by 24s, 16 by 16. So a lot of large format sizes that are available in that product line. Um, you know, John, it's like it's in the building process of a home. We're just loving these larger tiles. So I imagine if people can afford it, they want to do the larger paver. But that that leaves a lot less room for error because the longer that the larger the surface of the paver, even more important is the installation. Right. Yes. Yes, absolutely. I just spent a, a good part of my day on one deck for a client getting it just as perfectly flat and flush. And we were using a 12 by 24 um, uh, shell lock ivory. And I just was on the job for a good part of the day with the crew, just making sure we were kind of meeting that expectation. And it takes a lot of attention because you really can't be off a 16th of an inch. It, it, it shows itself with a larger paper. Yeah. Even like you're also contending with if the pool has a footer, a wall at the end, making sure that's even. There's so yeah. many angles and dimensions. Because sure. I was like, I was one of those horrible customers where I literally was there every day watching you and your men, and you're like, Jesus, yeah. this guy ever. No, you were great. Yeah, come on. I was so fascinated. Yeah, but I was fascinated by the process, to be honest with you. I was yeah. like, because you always hear this one guy going, oh, you can build your own pool. You know, you can save a ton of money and build your own pool. And then I could probably ask you how many times have you had to go and rescue someone that tried to dig and build their own pool, you know. <laughs> I've done it a few so, times. Really quick, I want to acknowledge Kate yeah. is uh, saying hello from uh, South Florida. Hey, Kate, thanks for uh, commenting and watching the show tonight. She has a question for us. For John, she's asking, how long is the warranty on pools? Oh, great question. So it depends on what you're talking about. So let's start with equipment. Um, depending on the equipment manufacturer, we're, we're a Pentair house. So most of the pool equipment that we use for everything on our pools is manufactured by Pentair and they provide a three-year envelope warranty on all the equipment so lights pumps fil filters uh, salt cells Peter. et cetera. yeah Peter. yeah <laughs> um i'm gonna test it out one john you know yeah. that uh the pentair rep came and said guess what you're just under your three-year warranty so we had uh, our full heater uh repaired because that is Good. not cheap that's like an expensive yeah. specialization uh, we have a gas heater for our hot tub. And he said, yeah. no, I got your invoice from uh, from uh, uh, Island Pools. You are actually yeah. just under the warranty. So I didn't have to worry about it. So thank the Lord on that. So all the pool equipment and everything is roughly three years. Uh, right now, th yeah, three years. And just to stay on pool equipment to give her a little bit more um, information beyond that, the things that that are manufactured like the pool pumps. When we talk about a pool pump, we're talking about uh, a variable speed pool pump. That's most of what's out there now. The, we don't really know the life, and this will sound odd, but we don't know the life expectancy of these pumps yet because they haven't been out in the marketplace that long necessarily. And I, I will tell you in the last, you know, 10 years, I've personally probably managed about 400 pool builds. I, I, I can count just 
a few pumps that have ever failed. Okay. okay. So the pumps, I, I think the pumps are very, very, very strong. They're going to last a long time. Well past warranty heaters are a little bit more, especially gas heaters are a little bit more technical. They, they get thermostats and stuff. You do have to look forward to doing a little maintenance on those from time to time. Um, pool heaters as in heat pumps. Again, those are probably 10 to 15 year units before they really need attention. Um, and then salt cells. Salt cells are typically five years, six years, seven years, somewhere in there, they start to need replacing the cell itself. Okay. Okay. Um, so, so that's equipment. Um, interior finish of the pool. We're talking about the pebble finish or what people might refer to as like a Marsite interior or a pebble tech. Um, these are all just technically brand names. Um, most of the finishes going in these days are pebble finishes. Okay. Most of those manufacturers are supplying a limited manufacturer's lifetime warranty. And so what does that mean to a homeowner? When you hear lifetime warranty, you're like, oh, I could live in it for 50 years. And if there's ever a problem, it'll get replaced. No. What the manufacturer is saying with that lifetime warranty is they are betting that that interior finish will never wear out for the life of the pool. And so what is the life of a pool? I don't know, a uh, concrete pool, you know, we've got concrete pools we finished that were, have, have remodeled and refinished that were, you know, built in the 60s. Um, so, I mean, it's, you know, concrete pools can last a long, long time. Um, but the pebble finishes are extremely durable. If you have a pebble finish in your pool, you're probably good for 25 years, realistically. Okay. So I have a pebble finish in my pool. Is that a pebble yeah. finish? Yeah. Okay. Now, if so you I wouldn't have to resurface it for 20 years? It, it, probably not. Yeah. Okay. But what's it's, the, so does that mean it's warranted for 20 years? Well, it's warranted for 20 years not to wear out. Okay. okay. But what happens to interior finishes is they don't wear out necessarily. They, 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 they ugly out. Okay. They so, fade. well, they fade and they get micro elements in them. You get micro amounts of iron, copper, zinc, and those get themselves into the finish. They react with the pool water and your, your finish will start to kind of look blotchy and stained over, you know, and that's usually around year 15 to 20, you start seeing that. But that doesn't mean it's not good. It doesn't mean it's worn out. Okay. Can an acid wash fix that or no? Sometimes. Sometimes you can do a drain and a chemical treatment that gets those micro elements out and yeah. gets that finish back to really a very pretty new look. So if it's not worn out, meaning you're not, you haven't lost the body of the finish, you know, you don't need to replace it. Okay. So what about like a leak? Is that warranted for the first year? Yeah, so usually most pool builders will do like a one-year workmanship on the pool, meaning if there's a leak or there's an issue with the pool itself, the pool shell's got yeah. an issue. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, so, yeah, and, and, it, and it depends on the builder. I would say most builders are offering at least a one-year workmanship on the project itself. And so what is really, what's important to the homeowner is really what I try to think about. Like what's going to get them in a position where something big's going to happen, right? That's going to cost them a lot of money. And the way most concrete pools are built in the state of Florida to Florida code, they're, they're very durable. The shell itself is very durable. It's very uncommon to have a pool shell fail that can't be repaired. Okay. Um, I've never, I've never had one. Um, I've seen a few over my years that I've, I've had calls to go look at. Most of them are pools that were built in the seventies. Um, mm -hmm. They're just old. They're just older pools. You can get a leak in a pool. Um, that's not uncommon, but leaks are usually fairly easy to fix because they're not in the shell of the pool itself. They're out of fitting. And what I mean by a fitting is a pool return. So a jet coming into the pool, putting water back into the pool or a light housing. Usually you can get a leak around those. They, they're following the PVC piping that's through the pool and um, easily fixed, you know? So yeah. if you're, 
if you're looking at warranty, what's going to be important to the homeowner typically is I would recommend a pebble finish because they're very durable. Okay. They're going to be better than a quartz finish. So you have pebble and you have quartz. Quartz is more your classic Marsite look, a much smoother look with a finer grain material in it. They, they're not as durable. They don't last as long. Usually you can get about 10 to 15 years out of a quartz finish. Are they cheaper? Slightly, but not much. So it's not worth it. I, I wouldn't. Yeah, I, I don't recommend Why does somebody do it? Because it's smoother on your feet? Because when you first get this pebble, let's be honest, it's a little rough on the feet at first. You, you're sure. always like, hey, you got to break your pool in, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah, it's a little smoother uh, finish. You're just there's not a, a much body to them as far as durability, so they just wear they wear quicker. Okay, and um, you're you know, ten to fifteen years is kind of where a lot of people finally look at them and say, "I'm going to refinish my pool again." Okay, all right. But, I'm getting but, to my question. Yeah. I don't mean to stop. Go ahead. You go yeah. Ahead. Go right ahead. Yeah. I need to stop that last thought. Go ahead. Yeah. No, I was just going to say, as far as her question goes, I would really look at the thing that will be important to you is the equipment package warranty that you're that you're looking at. That's going to be the thing that you want. Yeah. So let me summarize that. Um, it kind of reminds me of new builds, new construction. The builder will warranty the home fully and their workmanship the first year. That's why I always tell people get an inspection around month 10 or 11, just to make sure everything is working per manufacturer warranties. But then after that, your HVAC's got three to five years. Your roof yep. uh, has an X amount of years and your structural is 10 years. So that goes probably the same for the pool kind of thing. So when you're shopping a pool, make sure you understand what the workmanship warranty is by the builder. And then also yep. understand, depending on if it's a Pentair or uh, what's that other big brand pool equipment company? Oh, Hayward. Hayward, right. That's right. You know, yeah. so you had to determine what their what their warranties are and, and all that. So good question. I like it. Um, we're going to move on. Thank you, Kate. Appreciate that. If you have any more questions, shoot them. Come on, guys. Last time I did this with a lender or whatever, they started sending me questions at the last minute. And we're only going till 9 o'clock tonight. So if you have a pool question and you want to hear from me, do it now. Don't wait. All right. Timmy, thank you. Hello. <laughs> Mini style pools. One that act as a hot tub and swim exercise pool where water moves and then is it still large enough for kids to swim <laughs> <laughs> hey timmy you want it all huh <laughs> i like it i like it yeah give me everything in that pool um yeah, yeah so you so, i don't even know what mini means i mean is mini like eight by ten i mean because a standard pool john is what 15 by 30 or 15 yeah. by 25 Pretty typical, 15 by 30 with a integrated sun shelf and steps and stuff like that. Yeah. So the the question is, so what, you know, how many gallons is that? Is everybody like, fifteen thousand typically? Yeah, 15, typically fifteen thousand okay. gallons is a pretty a average. average. What's that? Average. Okay. Do you want to take a jab yeah, at Timmy's question? Yeah. Yeah. Average is about fifteen thousand. So if you if you were to, to do a, a mini pool that also acted as a hot tub and you could do swim exercises in it, you're almost getting into the realm of an above ground uh, swim spa, which they do manufacture. I, you know, the, these uh, above ground spa manufacturers make them. They're fairly large, um, but they can kind of meet that requirement. Now, if you built an in ground concrete custom what i call a spool which is a miniature pool hot tub okay and we've done some of those when you do them what you want to really build is a hot tub in a pool but you're basically have a very small pool and we're talking about like a 10 by 10 pool with a 10 by 10 hot tub and they're side by side so you can kind of go from one to the next okay you would not want to build a mini pool that also could act as a hot tub because you'd have a very difficult time keeping it hot when you wanted it to heat up. Because obviously the larger the body of water, especially in the, in the winter months, the longer it takes to heat up. So if you were to create a miniature pool that could act as a hot tub, you're talking about a, a bigger unit than just a typical hot tub. And I think you'd have a very difficult time heating it 
in the winter. It wouldn't be worth doing. And then if you were to add a swim jet into it, um, you would need swimming space. So you really, what he's really asking for is a spool, which is a very small pool with an integrated hot tub, and you'd put a swim jet at one end. And then you could actually swim in place. The kids could play in the pool section. And then if you're going to heat up the hot tub, which is integrated to the pool, you're just heating up that body of water, not the whole thing at the same time. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty intense there. I, I've i seen or heard or I've actually seen uh, someone who built one of those jets in their pool for exercising. And yeah. they said the first one was really loud and they're trying to do another one that's not as loud. Mm -hmm. uh, I heard they can be very loud, those jets, to create a current for you to swim against. Yeah, the, the so Badu which is a local manufacturers uh, over at spec pumps. They make swim jets here locally. They make swim jet systems and um, they make them from basic all the way up to somebody who's like a tri triathlete. And mm -hmm. uh, the pump systems, when you turn that on are, are, are pr they're loud because they're moving a lot of water. Um, and we've installed quite a few of those. And then there's also a hydraulic system. We've done only one hydraulic system and they're quieter because it's just a small hydraulic pump at the side of the house that runs a hydraulic uh, fan motor that's actually built into the pool. And yeah. uh, those will move a lot of water. And I imagine that's not cheap. No, no. Swim systems are, I usually would say once you go to install it and you're done plumbing it and running the entire system integrated to the pool, you're, you're going to spend you know, eight to $12,000, depending on which system you're going with. Yeah. So, I mean, as, I mean, have you seen people do that on a spool? I've not done one on a spool because one of the issues you would have with a spool is the amount of water a swim jet moves. You actually yeah. need, ideally, the manufacturer wants about at least a 20 foot run yeah. from one end to the other, because if it's too small, you, you would actually push a wake of water potentially over the backside of the pool. Oh, okay. Um, they move a lot of water. Okay. And is school by definition is 10 by 10? Uh, I mean, the I would say the last couple that we built were like 10 by 10 by 15. And then you figure a portion of that in that hot it is, is a hot tub. Okay. All right. Got it. Um, we got a message here, comment from Ty. Are hot tubs and heaters standard in Jacksonville? Um, no. As far as a standard when you build a pool or is, uh, you know, so the question, the answer would be if, if you're asking are hot tubs and heaters standard in Jacksonville um, as far as what people like to build, I would say half of the pools I build are pools only with no hot tub built in them. Okay. Then comes the question, do you want to be able to heat that pool? So heat the pool up in the spring and the fall. You're not really going to attempt to heat the pool in the winter. Okay. And let's say the three coldest months out of the year. So the most popular package and in my opinion, the best value you can do for a pool is to build a pool only and add a heat pump to the package. Because now instead of swimming, let's say six months out of the year, you're going to swim somewhere between nine to 10 months out of the year at a custom temperature that you like. So if you like swimming at 82 degrees or 85 degrees, that heat pump will do that for you. Okay. But it's not it's not necessarily standard because we build custom pools. So it's what the customer wants. Do they want to pool with the hot tub, without a hot tub, with a heater, without a heater? Um, if you have a hot tub, obviously you need a gas heater. So that's a given. So that comes with the hot tub package. But half half at least half of our customers do not build hot tubs. So it's not something that's a given at all and not a necessity to enjoy your backyard. No, it's not. And and I think if you're doing a resale, so back in the day when people said, is this going to add value to my home on a resale? I would say you're probably going to get 20, 30% of the money back today. Right. I would say 
because we have such a lot of migration, I would say you're going to get your money back, but it's also going to help the resale of your house because people have this, I don't know what it is, this dream of moving to Florida and having a pool, which is normal, just having a body of water behind you. Um, yeah. Now for me, having little ones in Northeast Florida, you know, around November through February for our, for our standards, it's cold. Okay. And so we have, when you say heater pump, that's the electric pu uh, pump that heats my main pool up and it works like a thermostat. So my wife programs it on the phone, uh, the thermostat of degrees we want it on. And every time the pool drops below that temperature, the pump comes on and heats the pool to maintain that temperature. Now, I think around November is when we shut the thermostat off completely because we don't want it running all winter because here in Jacksonville at night, it could get 30s, 40s in December and January and February. And so right. it's right around now or last month, we put the thermostat back on to automatically keep our pool at temperature. And I think it's phenomenal. I love it. But yeah. we did get a hot tub because the pool was for my wife and kids. I like the hot tub because the gas heater fires up the heat to a hundred and something degrees very quickly in our hot tub that we built. And I, I, I work out. And so I really get a good therapy from the heat. Um, plus when the kids are really cold in the winter time swimming in the pool and it's not warm enough, they always hop back and forth from the hot tub. And I know some folks that don't have a heater in their pool, a heat pump, but they have a hot tub with the gas and their kids just swim in the hot tub because some of these hot tubs are eight by eight. Um, right. you know, we went a little slow, smaller. So yeah. it's really a preferential thing, but it makes me think of one question because I still sell people instead of doing a gas heater for the hot or a pump, a heater, electric heater pump for the pool. I'm still seeing people doing the solar. Is that come a long way? Is it better now? I mean, so, I mean, solar, so solar heating for a pool or a heat pump, that's the question. Like, if, if like how are you going to heat your pool? You have two choices, solar or a heat pump, okay? So, a heat pump heats your pool by using air temperature. So, it needs about, it, the manufacturers will tell you 50 degrees. I tell people when it's 60 degrees during the day, and high 40s or 50s at night, your heat pump will start to work effectively. When it's 70 during the day or 80 during the day and it's 50 or 60 at night, which kind of the weather pattern we're having right now, your pool temperature might be 65 degrees. But if you have a heat pump, it could be 85 degrees. And a heat pump doesn't care if it's cloudy out, if it's raining, it doesn't care. It works off of air temperature and humidure, okay? Solar requires sun, and we have a lot of kind of gray days in the spring and fall. And so if your solar system is sitting on your roof, obviously, and not getting a lot of sun, you're not creating a lot of hot water. And, and that being said, you know, the, the cost differential to put in a solar system and a heat pump is probably the same. So I thought it was cheaper. They're about the same because you got to get up on the roof and run roof penetrations into your roof and and put the system up on the roof. Um, and then you got to maintain it. So anytime you have an issue with it, somebody's got to go up on the roof to fix it. So you don't okay. if, if you really notice, you don't see a lot of people using solar heaters on their roofs here. I see it very rarely. I rarely have a customer actually put one in. And I, I think it a lot of it comes down to. Um, you know, you're adding something on your roof that's fairly delicate. I mean, a solar system by design is, is a series of very fine pipes that you're basically piping the water from your pool up onto the roof, letting the sun heating it, and then it's gravity feeding back into the pool. Okay, so storms, wind damage, all that kind of stuff obviously can affect it. It's sitting up there and, and, they, and they do deteriorate over time, so they do have to be replaced. And you're doing roof penetrations, you're penetrating that framing system through the roof to hold it in place when it's sitting there. Okay. Um, so that's that, that, terrible. 
Well, and I think that's why we don't see them used a lot. They were very popular down south in Miami when I was growing up as a kid because they didn't have heat pumps. And okay. heat pumps heat pumps look like a big air conditioner and they run along uh, on electricity, but they're very efficient. They don't cost a huge amount of money to run every month. Okay, so they're more efficient on ongoing costs because you're you're relying on not gas, but you're relying on the sun heating up the yeah. cells. So it's cheaper on, I don't even know if my gas bill is really that horrendous from the hot tub. Because honestly, when I crank it up to 101 degrees, I'm sweating in 10 minutes and I turn it off. I'm literally jumping in the pool because it gets so hot. That's how effective it is. So I personally love the gas heaters. I mean, if you're looking for therapy, it is fantastic. I mean, I almost feel like in the cooler months, you know, my wife laughs at me because everybody's into this freaking cold plunging now. So I'm literally going from the hot tub into an icy cold pool. And as I mentioned earlier, one of the big conversation, not many people do this, but I did my hot tub level with the pool with a, with a wall, just barely kind of so my water sometimes cascades into the pool and my wife still blames me for it because if my water level is too high from raining too much, I have to drain the pool to keep right. it not level with the hot tub so the hot water doesn't, the cold water and hot water don't mix. But I think yeah. it's such a modern look. You don't have to worry about climbing over the wall, but I, I, I do not see many people doing that here. Everybody no. raises their hot tub, what, a foot or two, and then they do the yeah. cascading, cascading waterfall. Yep. It's so freaking common that I'm like, my wife right. killed me because that was the one thing I asked. I'm like, please, I don't want a raised yeah. Tub. I want a smooth looking modern deck with the, 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 the yeah. yeah. Do you see many people doing that or am I just an anomaly? No, about one in 10 will do a, what, what you're talking about with just a flush hot tub. Yeah. So yeah. it's, it's, it's a, most people do a raised uh, hot tub Yeah. and uh, you know, you, you end up having a waterfall coming out of it, spilling into the pool. So you've got a water feature and you know, it's just a, different look you know the flush look like you have is just that clean chic modern look yeah you know what i regret john though is that everybody's doing these sun decks in the pool and i have kids i'm scared as heck they're going to hit their head on it jumping in from the wrong angle not that they would but it doesn't worry me at times but the other thing i don't like about it is i feel like we don't really use it much how many times am i sitting in a chair on the sun shelf Hardly ever. I'm either in the pool or I'm on a chair deck. Ter- ter- and this is really opinionated, but I, I really wish I used that extra six feet to for swimming longer yeah, for cool. like, on the pool. I just don't think it's worth it. I don't understand the craze. Um, I never, every time I go over to somebody's house, I never see him truly sitting in that chair on the pool, especially those curvy chairs. They're not even comfortable. They look no. so amazing. And I've sat yeah. in one, I'm like, I don't, is this comfortable? I don't get it. How do you get out of it? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now All right. the the sun shelves are, I mean, probably ninety percent of the pools we build are have sun shelves. Yeah. And um, if you don't, okay, so if you don't have a screen enclosure, you do, and you have an open deck. All right. So you're exposed to the sun, and it's summertime, and you can sit in your sun shelf with a bubbler bubbling up making water sounds and you got an umbrella holder there in the sun shelf and you can sit in an adirondack chair in your sun shelf listening to music relaxing in the middle of summer it's pretty nice and i see a lot of people use it now older people when i say older like my age yeah like my age and and yeah and you know so say 40 up it's a great place to sit and relax when you're watching the kids play in the pool. Yeah. You know, I will say, I think the sun shelf is good when the girls, when my kids were like three, you know, where you, they're not swimming yet. Right. So they're in the water, they're playing comfortably and I don't have to worry about them drowning. So I think that's one of the benefits of the sun shelf for us as parents, we never get to relax. Dad, come in the pool, dad, come in the pool. So if I'm out by the pool, my kids are right. not letting me sit in an no. adirondack back chair under an umbrella with bubblers. Sorry. But I will say about the bubblers. If you do have a, what do you call it, a level uh, hot tub with the pool, um, yeah. and you don't have that water feature, 
the bubblers that you were told us to do was the best yeah. idea ever because those bubblers are always going off and it's like a waterfall sound. Uh, it's just yeah. water coming out of holes in the sun shell. Right. And it's so relaxing. Even when we have our doors open to our outdoor deck, you can yeah. hear the bubblers. It kind of like is so yeah. relaxing. It was the best idea ever because we didn't yeah. have that waterfall effect. Yeah. Um, so I like that. The other thing I wanted to mention was I see so many people with these fancy hot tubs with expensive glass. Yeah. And you kind of, I didn't say you talked me out of it, but you're like, Hey, those are going to take a lot of, they're expensive and they're going to take a lot of work to maintain. I am so glad I didn't get them because I have friends that have the fancy glass. They're constantly having to polish it every so often. Otherwise they turn from that nice, right. smooth glass look to a very hazy cloudy look and they literally have to bring a um what do you call it one of those machines that literally polishes the glass oh yeah no you have to acid wash them you have to maintain them and yeah. um, it's a big expense i'm not a i'm i'm a big proponent of save your money on that item yeah yeah it's great because you're a pool builder and you're like don't spend the money if you, unless you really want it, which I appreciated that because I'm glad I didn't get it. We have regular tile and it's easy to clean and I'm glad for it. Um, let's get back to this here. Ty, should I pay extra on a new build for pool prep options if I don't have the built in initially by the builder? Yes. Go ahead, John. You answer that. Okay. So I, um, the way I'm reading that is we're talking about a setting up a pool package where the house is basically pre-wired to accept pool equipment at a set location at the side of the house. Right. Yep. I, um, I do not believe that it's worth it because what the builder is doing is they're basically just providing an exterior box and a PVC electrical chase that terminates at the main electrical panel let's say in the garage where they typically are located okay i've had customers tell me how much they paid for that package and it's usually in the thousands um you know it's a 12 to 1500 dollars item or sometimes even more and unless you have a two-story house and it's going to be difficult getting the wires run from the far side of the house to the opposite side of the house where the garage is. That's what we're talking about. If your pool equipment's on the opposite side of the house is the garage and you have a two story and there's no way to access that panel, then obviously that could be worthwhile. Okay. However, it does not change my pricing whatsoever. So when I go to a house and they're like, I'm pre pre plumbed for my pool equipment, it's still, my electrician still has to run all the same electrical cords. He has to do all the same work. He just has a convenience potentially in that chase. On top of that, probably a quarter of the pool equipment chases that are put in by the builders won't work because they end up with too many 90 bends in them and you actually can't run the chase through it. So my, my answer is, do not do it and save your money for a vacation or something else. Kids college fund, a new toy, something other than that package, in my opinion. Wow. Okay, John, I didn't know that. I always advise people to do it. But does that also include the gas line if they do need to put a hot tub or anything? Uh... That's that's a different animal. Now, if you're if you're going to have a hot tub in the future and you know that your pool equipment is going to be in a set location and they're going to run a gas chase over to that section also that might be worthwhile depending on where your gas meter is. Okay. Yeah. But if it's just an electrical conduit chase, I, I don't suggest doing it. Yeah. I did a gas line for my grill and we ended up having to do a separate gas line anyway from the, from the water heater from the right. side of the house. And I remember when you say a chase, I want people to understand. I don't. I'm, I'm not even sure 100. percent But I think what he means is when they're 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 basically creating piping for it to pass through the wiring and stuff. Is that what you mean? And if there's too many bends in it, it won't go right. through. It's hard to 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 catch it yeah. at the other end. And we had to yeah. run a lot because remember, I moved my gas line all the way to the other side of the house. So 
I remember you had to come and help with the chase to pull it through because the outdoor kitchen people couldn't get it or was right. it vice versa. One of y'all were having problems with it. And I think you had to come in and yeah. you actually had to redo it, I think, from my yeah. kitchen people. Um, yeah. And you didn't charge yeah, no, me. Sorry for anybody who's listening. He charged you, but he didn't charge me because I was nice. <laughs> I try to tell my people when you're building a house, yeah. try the opposite of approach of when you're <laughs> yelling at your superintendent, realize they get yelled at all day long. They're building 15 to 30 houses yeah. and they're using subcontractors and they're not always there. And you're just yelling at them. Yeah. I guarantee you, if you try sometimes a different approach and go, Hey, John, man, I know you're building 30 pools and the guy, the electrician came over and he screwed up, man. I know these things happen. What can we do to fix that, John? You know, you're such a nice guy. I love talking to you and seeing you every day. You know, we've been hanging out for six months. When's this damn pool going to be done? I mean, I love you, John. You know, if you just try that approach, yeah, you know, it actually works sometimes. I tell my clients when we're building a new house and we have a problem, I go, all right, hold on. Let me handle this first. Let's chill out. Let's just realize that these problems happen all the time. There's going to be a solution. And we had some issues, you know, and we work through them. That's part of the build of a teamwork together. Uh, yeah. So um, I, I went on a rampage there. What were we just, what was the point of that whole thing? Well, no, I think it's just the chases and running a, a pre-wired pool package is just atypically, I would say, don't do it. Now, you, you had mentioned the gas lines for like a gas heater. Typically, you have to run a dedicated main line from your gas meter to your pool gas heater because it's a different poundage pressure of gas that's fed to that heater. Mm -hmm. So what's piped through the house typically will not work anyhow. Okay. All right. Yeah. So in, in essence, like what I was just saying about my order kitchen is you had to redo or help out with the chase anyway. So whatever I was spending, I, I you could have just done it the first time, right? Uh, by the way, if you're coordinating with a pool builder and you're using a separate company for an outdoor kitchen, you don't do outdoor kitchens, correct? Not, no, not. We used to do some, but I don't do them anymore. We just don't have time. Right. And I, I was, I was building quite a intricate outdoor kitchen or whatever. Yeah. And I was, my wife was very specific on what she wanted and whatnot. And I, I just say, if you're going to go that route, make sure that you know that the pool builder and the and the and the the people they're building out their kitchen that they work together nicely and coordinate that, especially with the permit. Hundred percent. Yeah, you've got to. The only thing that matters in the end is the customer and their final dream for their backyard. And so, a lot of times, I'm working with a general contractor that's doing some type of addition as well. There's a lot of outdoor kitchen um, build guys, you know, builders that I work with in town. There's people doing sunshades and pergolas and, and you name it. And all those things have to be coordinated. And so nine times out of 10, everybody's happy to work together. And I think, but that's the only thing that matters is the final project for the homeowner, everybody working together to coordinate to get there. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Uh, let me do this last question. Cause I had some other questions too. You guys answered my spool question. Are they cheaper? I would guess so. To, to, well, not, not necessarily. Okay. So there's, there's a fixed cost in doing everything with a pool, whether it's the plumbing, electrical, shooting the shell, forming the shell, stealing the shell, all those things. And what I mean by that is, it's, it's going to cost me the same money almost to plumb a spool that it's going to cost me to plumb a pool. I might have a savings on the linear footage of PVC piping, but I'm going to be paying my plumbers the same price to do it. Okay. Uh, electrical to run all the electrical is going to be the same because it's the same amount of equipment where you're going to save money is the cost of the actual shell of the pool, the cost to do the interior finish, how much tile goes in and then it depends on how big your deck is but you would you would have a savings there is a savings there it would just depend on the overall scope of the project so you might save 15 to 20 percent on the overall project doing a spool versus a standard size pool let's say yeah man i got so much to cover and we only have five minutes left this is terrible um 
All right. Thank you for answering that, John. Um, real quick, uh, I see a lot of people saving money or the builder when they require, ask their builder to build a pool. They, they always try to, first of all, I've noticed when you build with a builder, the pool, a lot of these builder have a preferred pool builder, right? Cool. Those yes. preferred pool builders, like some of the big names in town, they have to get those projects done a priority. So if you're not using those companies with the builder, you're probably going to be a secondary. You're not going to be a primary because those pool builders have to answer to Toll Brothers, all these big builders that are saying, hey, guys, this is the timeline. You need to get this pool done first. So anybody yeah. that's using that same pool builder that is a preferred pool builder by a national home builder, they're making their your project is going to be not their primary purpose because they're being feed right. business all day out by a big builder. So I think that's the number one mistake people make. If you don't go with the builder, then don't use a pool builder that is a preferred builder for a home builder because you're going to be secondary. I believe that's my opinion. They I probably agree. would deny that. I would say, come on, let's be, let's be obvious here. If, if you have sure. a Toll Brothers account, you're going to work on those customers' pools before uh, your Joe who just hired you to do a pool. That's the right. first thing. The other thing I noticed is that I've noticed pools cost 20 to 30% more when you purchase a pool through the builder, when you're building a home, the right. builder has to make a margin on that. You're almost delaying the, 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 the build time of their home to add that pool in. So sure. you're going to be paying a surcharge of at least 20%, if not 30%. Um, yeah. Now, the benefits are is that people say, oh, well, you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, your sprinklers and tearing up grass and all that kind of thing. Sure. Well, for me, this is three, four years ago. I paid $500 a pallet of grass, and I think I had four or five pallets. So, yes, I spent $2,500 on grass. Okay. I also had to cap my sprinklers and then re re reroute them around the pool. But I didn't have a lot of land left here in Nogatee, so I didn't have to reroute a lot of sprinklers. I think those two expenses were about a thousand dollars each. So it was give it give or take twenty five hundred plus the grass. It was an extra five grand. But my yeah. pool was roughly around ninety two or hundred. Let's say hundred grand. If I was paying a surplus of twenty percent, that's twenty thousand dollars more through the builder. And oh, yeah. what it cost me to do grass in in the sprinklers five thousand yeah. dollars. Right. Yep. yep. So, I agree with that. So it's, that's a fifteen thousand dollars savings. Yes, for eight months my my lawn was torn up and I had to see John every other day, but I was, I, I think I, I think that's, I'm cheap. So that's a significant savings to me. Sure. Um, so, so that's the argument. The benefit of going through the builder is, is that you can, can finance 50% uh, of the pool, at least through the bill, through your mortgage. Right. Um, but you still have to come up with 50% of the cash up front. Right. Yeah. So um, those are the pros and cons. That is totally up to you. That's a personal decision, you know, yeah. but you are going to pay a little bit more. Now, if you're building a $70,000 pool and I say you're paying 20% more, it might not mean as much to you. Somebody who's building a $150,000 pool and they're paying 20% more, right? Correct. You know, you're like, oh, seven, 10 grand, no big deal. 20, 30, 40 grand. That's kind of a big deal to me. Right. Um, to I just wanted to touch up on that. Um, and I get everybody else you guys answer me. So, um, the other thing I was wondering about is when people, I noticed that sometimes the builders are pushing people to, or pool builders when they're building through the builder, they're trying to save money because you're paying that extra margin. I'm noticing they're putting the pool right up against the screen and there's no real walkway around the pool. What's right. your thoughts on that? It depends on, so we'll do those uh, from time to time when we have a zero setback, meaning we can't push the build any further into the backyard because there's, 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 we're, we're hitting some demarcation line, an easement of some type. So it can't go any further and there's just not the space there to build. So the homeowner will say, you know what? I don't need a deck around the back of my pool. I'm okay with it. I'd rather have more deck between the pool and the house. And so um, you do see those, but in new construction builds, you see them more often because they're trying to keep the overall cost of that project down as tight as possible. Yeah, I always see that. And I go, oops, saving money. They put a little water cascade on the back of it. Um, yeah. I understand, you know, these lots specifically where I am in Nakati, they're getting smaller and smaller. And 
When you say setback, that means what? You have to have at least, what, four feet from the end of your deck to the property line minimum or maybe so it's, six? It's five, it, yeah, it's typically five feet to the water's edge of the pool is, okay. is, eight, is atypical or five feet from a footer to a screen enclosure. So those, those are the setbacks typically. Okay. Uh, another question is, is that I did it and I know like not everybody does any pay extra. What do you think about those, those panels that are they, on the screen enclosures? First of all, people ask me, should I have a screen enclosure? Okay. June, the bugs are like crazy out here. Okay. And people think that because on, you live on a retention pond that you're going to have um, more bugs because bugs, mosquitoes hatch eggs on, a, uh, on water. That, that I don't find true. I'm on a preserve lot, and I think I have way more bugs than my friends that are on the pond. In fact, I see more people that are on the retention pond that don't have screens than yeah. people that are on the on the, um, on the the preserve lots. So I find it's way more buggy on the preserve lots and less buggy on the uh, retention ponds because you get more of a breeze at least. I, I so, agree. Yeah. I agree with you 100%. Yeah, so if people are determining whether or not they want to shell out the cash for a screen enclosure, I love it. I can open up my sliders or my French doors and my doors and windows and, and open it up without screens, knowing that my screen enclosure is pretty adequate. Um, yeah. What's your thoughts on the, the large panel screens? You know, I mean, you pay extra, they get broken easier, but they look phenomenal, dude. I love yeah. my two giant panels in the back. I mean... Right. But look, everybody, I would say this, if somebody's been somewhere to someone's house and they've got clear view panels, the big 20 foot screen panels on the back, either overlooking a lake or a preserve, you know, and they see them, they're like, okay, I got to have that because, you know, you see the value of it. And so if you have the space to do it and you can afford the extra cost to do it and you've got a view behind it to look at, whether it's a preserve or a lake or something, I like them. I think it really gives you a very open feel when you do them. Yeah, I mean, it's two, three grand yeah. extra or the fact that it was. Yeah. So it is a little bit extra. I mean, you could go from, you can go from 20,000 to 24,000 on a screen, which is yeah nothing to sneeze about. All right, we're wrapping it up. Anybody else have any last minute questions? This is your last chance. Uh, John's a very busy guy. This was a special favor for him to come on tonight. I had to really twist his arm. I had to beg yeah. him. I've been building up <laughs> for a long time. We haven't done business in years. I don't know why he even agreed to do it. <laughs> John, that. if somebody if somebody's built it wants to build a pool, what's the sure. process, man? I'm gonna be honest with you. You know I'm a straight shooter. That's why I love yeah. you. You're so straightforward with me and I and I can have those conversations with you. Um, God help you for the people that call you from here. They say, Hey man, I'm a straight shooter. Can you tell me this too? Um, right. can you give me a discount? No. I uh, never asked for that. I never asked John for a discount, um, but I did ask for, for his honest opinion. Sure. Um, if somebody, I, you know, people are so busy. I mean, it's not as bad as COVID and right after COVID. I mean, yeah. you guys were slammed, oh. slammed. Like it was like a chicken with a head cut off. We couldn't, yeah. we didn't, couldn't even find houses. People were buying shelter after COVID because we right. couldn't get houses. Enough. So things have calmed down a bit, I hope. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I mean, how what is the process? Because a lot of people call me and say, pool builder builders don't even call me back. Why are they not calling them back? Why is it so hard to just get someone on the phone or whatever? I mean, what's the what's the deal on that? What's the etiquette? What's the process? Should they email first? Should they call and leave a message with the expectation of being called a week later, two weeks sure. or even some kind yeah. of communication? I, I would say a lot of most of our contacts are uh, direct referral from somebody a friend of a friend, a neighbor that I've already built a pool for. So we we typically, either myself or my partner, will get a uh, a text or a call on our phones, on our personal business phones, where they'll say, hey, I got your number from Greg or a friend or somebody. Um, we do get uh, contacts through our uh, website where people will leave us an email there and, and we'll you know reach out to them. Usually I reach out to somebody within about two to three days of them contacting us. And I, I typically will text them and say, you contacted me, you know, you know, give me a rough idea of your schedule over the next week or so. I'll be happy to come out to the house, walk your property, do a design, do a proposal for you. Um, you know, why do the, why do people not get callbacks? Um, you know, I, 
that's been a notorious question in construction in Florida, uh, you know, that I've heard for 30 plus years. And it comes down to a lot of times there's demand is outpaced ability for people to build whatever it is you're looking for them to get built. Whether you're doing a, a new roof or you're adding a sliding door in your house or you're building a pool, how do you get somebody to call you back and simply show up to give you an estimate? And I would just tell homeowners to you know be persistent with that process. If they're going to try and get one, two, or three bids to build a pool in their backyard, they're going to have to take some time to do that. It may take them a couple months of making calls and setting appointments to get those three bids together so they can look at who do they want to have build their pool um, and just be persistent with that process, you know? Yeah. I mean, I also would say, I mean, there's an etiquette too. I mean, you guys asked for a provision of a survey too, right? I mean, shouldn't be people equipped and have a survey and know what the heck you want first and those yeah. kind of things. I mean, it's, I mean, it's, it's kind of like when people go to buy a house, I'm like, hire a, a real estate broker that deals with new construction all the time so that when you go to deal with these sales reps and you're dealing with experienced ones, they want people that are at least have a clue of what they want and they're prepared. Right. Um, you know, so, I mean, if you're so busy, you're more apt to go after the person that goes, Hey, that's why you're saying, come on, John, that's why you're saying when I get a referral, it's right. like, you know, kind of in a way you're not just dealing with Joe Schmo because like I get people from this channel all the time and I ask people say, I say, Hey, listen, can you answer these questions? And then we'll, one of the questions is when you're available and we'll set up a call because I don't need to do business with everyone and, or I may not be the right person for it. And so sure. I think people need to respect uh, other people's time. If you want a good quality builder or whatnot, um, you have to understand that they're in high demand and there's, there has to be some kind of level of, 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 of respect on that side too to understand that maybe your project may not be, maybe it's not the right pool builder, you know, and not to get offended by it or whatnot, that you should call Correct. a couple. And then also understand that, that John, I, I've asked you to do proposals before for clients and I've even offered to pay you. I think, yeah. you know, I said, hey man, let me pay you because it's not cheap for you. First you have to come out on your time to walk the, the, the lot, or maybe not most people do that, but you do that. You have yeah. to let the survey walk a lot to make sure what it is. Then you have to go draw it based on what the what you're as a customer saying you want, and, sure. and, and make sure to scale that it works on the property and those and those those lines that you're talking about, uh, restriction lines and whatnot. And then you have to design it in AutoCAD and make it look pretty, and you know, show yeah, the, 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 the bottom line it. is it, yeah. we didn't touch on it, but I'll touch on it real quickly. When, when I'm in the backyard with somebody, okay, I'm asking them questions that are, I would say, somewhat personal in nature. Um, you know, how many kids do you have? How old are they? What kind of activities do you, are the kids doing? Um, you know, tell me about yourselves. Uh, what's a typical Friday night like? What's a Saturday night like? Do you entertain? Do you have large groups, small groups? Because they're asking me not to necessarily build a pool for them. They're asking me to build outdoor lifestyle, a place to sit and listen to the water bubble, a place to cook, a place to lounge, a place to gather. Maybe there's a fire feature involved. The pool is part of it, but you have to be in the backyard to be able to understand what kind of piece of architecture you're going to build, you know? Yeah. You can't I'll do it. Add to that, and you've, you've been so gracious with your time. We're way over time, but I, you know, you and I do, we could talk for probably hours, but uh, yeah, uh, I think you probably spent more hours talking to me than actually building my pool some days and going, Jesus, this guy, I hope he's not around in the backyard this today. Um, but I always say to people, by if you're moving from out of state to Northeast Florida, we have some of the most glorious weather in the state of Florida. Yes, it does get hot, but I last June it didn't get hot till mid June. God bless if it happens again this year. But it was gorgeous, and yeah. I we literally live in our backyard around our pool. We have an outdoor sitting area. We have a TV. We have music. 
We have an outdoor kitchen. We grill every single night. My wife hands me the proteins and I go grill it. And I'll, I commit, I drink a White Claw. Forgive me, I get GERDs from beer now because I'm old and it hurts my stomach. But I'll have a refreshing White Claw or a soft drink, uh, a bubbly. And then I literally will, you know, in, my wife and I will sit out there and enjoy it. And the kids will come out. And we're like, why are you out here? This is mom and dad's time to go back and help. <laughs> the point being is that this is our oasis out of the house. So I tell people, buy less square footage on your home and spend more of your budget outdoors because perfect. I love it out there. I mean, yep. God, John, I kid you not, dude, you built a beautiful pool for us and we are super blessed. We love it. And I'm so glad my wife pushed me to get it because we spend so much time lounging out there or hot tubbing at night or right. cooking and grilling. It, and it's all screened in. It is just an extension of our living area, and we love it. We yeah. truly love it. So whether I get into the pool enough, my kids do make me get in it. Summertime, I'm in it a lot. But whether you're in the pool or not a lot or not, it's not necessarily whether you're in the pool all the time or not. Yeah. It's an outdoor living space. Yeah. And so I, I can't stress enough to people to chill out with your expenses in the design center in the inside of the house and actually put a little more money into that outdoor kitchen or to that, because that's where it's at, man. 100%. Mother Nature is beautiful here. We have better weather than half of Florida. From Orlando up, yeah. it's cooler up here. We have a change yeah. of seasons. And if you're on a preserve or lake, man, the sunset, it's just beautiful, you know, for sure. So, John, thank you so much, brother. I appreciate great. you. I like pools. Uh, do I have permission to put your information on this video for people sure. to call or yeah. should I tell them to reach out to me and I'll refer to them or what, how, how do you want to go about that? Whatever you prefer. I'm happy either way. Okay. All right. Well, I'll talk to you about that afterwards about what information you want me to put on there. Right. This is the great worldwide web. There's some crazies out there, but <laughs> um, uh, John Spiller, Island Pools, Northeast Florida. Thank you folks for ch uh, checking in. Make sure if you're watching my channel that you subscribe um, and I'm going to keep doing these as long as you keep watching. This is recorded as well. So if you have a question or a comment, put it below um, um, in the comment section and I will get to him or I'll have asked John to answer any additional questions we didn't get to tonight for those of you watching the recording. And of course, if you're looking to buy a house here in Northeast Florida, my name is Greg Detulio. I run the Living in Jacksonville team. I'd be more than glad to be uh, a help to you. It's never too early to start planning. And of course, if you're looking to sell your home, um, I'm going to give you very direct, straightforward feedback. We're seeing the market shift from a seller's market to a buyer's market, especially with heavy inventory or lots of builds are going on. Um, it is imperative that you price the home correctly and that you have a real estate broker that is going to tell you the truth, is not going to drag you on and ask you for price reductions every month after month after month after month. I'll also give you the true, honest opinion on your on if you're picking out new construction. That is my specialty. So I love this. I love also chatting about this stuff, as you can tell, and being able to hang out with people like John and talk about building homes and adding to them and making value. So love it. John, have a great night. Peace out. Right. Until the next one. Have a good night, everybody. All right. See you, Greg.